I have talked a lot on this channel about the Google Pixel Fold. We talked about it before the announcement, we talked about it during the announcement, and we've talked about it a lot after. And as someone who did the exact same thing for the Surface Duo, I can't help but notice that the discourse around the Pixel Fold is remarkably similar to the discourse that we had with the Surface Duo. It is a first-gen device from this company, right? Duo is first-gen Microsoft, Fold is first-gen from Google in the sense that they've never made a folding phone prior. Both of them were deemed to be too expensive. Both of them were deemed to be running hardware that was outdated. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about that last point because I'm not going to argue that it's, you know, not too expensive, okay? It's going to come down to what their strategy is. Does Google intend to sell a ton of these or not? What is their aim for this device? What is their goal for this device? Well, that's going to decide the price point. Of course, I would love for it to be cheaper than it is. I don't want to spend nearly $2,000 on this device any more than the next person does. I would love it if it was $1,200 or something crazy like that, but they chose 18 and really arguing about the price point just seems silly to me. The price is the price that they declared. But the question of whether or not the hardware is outdated and what impact that's going to have is something that we can explore. So we're going to explore that. Now, I feel like this conversation is one that has a ton of potholes that you can hit and a ton of red herring fallacies that you can run into. And I'm going to try first to throw out as much of this conversation as possible. The parts that are unnecessary, the parts that I don't think matter at all, we're going to try to get rid of those. So the first bit here, the Pixel Fold runs the Google Tensor G2. Okay, now this processor has been on the market since the Pixel 7 was launched. So it's been around for, what, half a year or something like that. The Tensor G3 is going to launch alongside the Pixel 8, and that's probably going to be, what, like three months after the Pixel Fold is on the market. So the first question is, is the Pixel Fold launching with outdated hardware? Well, in regard to that system on a chip, there is an argument that you could potentially make in that direction. Of course, almost every phone is running on outdated hardware, right? Because stuff moves so very quickly. Right now, the S series from Samsung is running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Well, the Z Fold 4 runs the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. That is outdated. And it became outdated round about six months after it came out. We're in a similar position, maybe a little bit worse with the Pixel Fold. So let's just put that out there. Yes, you could potentially call it outdated. That's true of a lot of hardware. So then the piece of this that I can leave here for people is that if your argument is that for $1,800, I want the newest possible hardware and I don't want for three months to pass and then to have the old version of a processor, if that is your full argument, you're not talking about performance, you're not talking about data, we're not talking about any of that stuff yet. We're just saying for that money, I want the newest possible thing for as long as possible. That is fair. If that is your argument, I have no umbrage with this argument. That is absolutely fair. You are more than welcome to feel that way. That being said, a lot of the time what people mean when they say it's running outdated hardware is they mean that it is slower hardware versus the competitors. So now we need to analyze this a bit and see, one, what do we mean by slower and how are we determining that it is in fact slower? Well, the biggest way people seem to determine that it is slower is with benchmarks. You can run all manner of benchmarks between devices running the Tensor G2 and devices running the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, or if you want to compare the Pixel Fold to the upcoming Z Fold 5, maybe you would run your Pixel 7 Pro against an S23 Ultra and run benchmarks one versus the other, and you are inevitably going to see benchmarking scores where the Snapdragon processor has better scores than the Tensor G2. So if you're looking at benchmarks, you would say, yes, the Tensor G2 is outdated. And by outdated in this context, we mean slower than the Snapdragon processors. So likewise, if your position is for $1,800, I want the device that scores the best possible on benchmarks, I once again take no umbrage with your position. That is absolutely fair. But we have to then take a step further. We have to actually ask ourselves if that makes the device worse. And now I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack from the same people 
who have already gone out of their way to call me a shill and say I'm in Google's pocket and the things like that that people say when they don't actually have an argument to make so they just attack the individual rather than countering their points. But if you're not one of those morons, let's actually, let's think about this for a second. Let's break it down. I think we can all agree that if those benchmark scores, which were lower, indicated that the phone would therefore be slower and therefore worse, at day-to-day -day tasks that that would in fact be a problem. But we can't just take that as a given. We actually have to determine if this is true. Do lower benchmarking scores actually one-to-one -one equate to slower phones in real-world day-to-day usage? I think that in instances, this can be the case. But more broadly, it is simply not the case any longer. The analogy that I would make would be that you're going to purchase a new automobile. You need, you need a car to drive to work in. Maybe you've got a family, you want a sedan. Let's say you want to buy a new sedan. So you're trying to decide between an Altima and a Camry. And at this point in your purchasing decision, you have simply looked at the camera and you've looked at the Ultima and you're like, they both look okay. So then what you do is you have them both thrown onto a dyno and you do a pull on both of them and you look at the torque and the horsepower of both of these cars and you just go with whichever one has the better dyno pull and that's going to be the better car. Clearly, that is not a good way to determine what car you should buy. There are a million and one other factors that should be way higher on the list than a dyno pull for buying your next car. Why? Well, because typically you're driving on the roads that have speed limits. You don't need to see which car can accelerate the quickest because you're probably only driving 65, 75 miles an hour ever at the absolute highest. And most of your commute around the city is probably going to be 40 miles an hour. That peak performance is far less relevant than, like I said, a million other things. When we make our purchasing decisions on our phones based upon benchmark scores, we are effectively, in my opinion, doing the very same thing. Now, of course, your phone doesn't have a road speed limit. That makes no sense. But what it does have is something that is kind of equivalent to it. Think about what most people do with their phones most of the time, and that's going to kind of act as your speed limit. The vast majority of the time, we are opening YouTube, we are opening whatever apps people use these days, TikTok and things like that, relatively basic apps, Instagram. For me, apps like Relay for Reddit or Twitter or Feedly, these are relatively small applications. And the simple fact of the matter is, these applications are kind of like driving your brand new Ultima down a 35 mile an hour road. You're going as fast as the road will allow you. The app opens up nearly instantaneously. And then because I showed some B-roll in a prior video where I was talking over two phones opening apps one at a time, you know, showing that they opened them up at essentially the same time, people said, only opening the app is irrelevant. Well, you do go, go a step further. Start doing things in the apps then. Fine, whatever. If you don't care about how fast it opens the app when it's not been in RAM or anything like that, start doing things in the app too. And guess what? It's going to be just as fast on both phones. The apps that we use 99% of the time, opening and using them task to task, whether it's the Tensor G2, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, they're going to be nearly instantaneous. We are driving down a road with a 35 mile an hour speed limit. Now I know from my comments already that people are going to say, but Shane, you're showing one app at a time, not what we're going to be seeing on these foldable devices that will routinely have one app already open and then a second app launched alongside it in split screen. Well, guess what? We can approximate that. Let's take a Z Fold 4, let's take a Pixel 7 Pro and increase the DPI until you get a taskbar which is very similar to the taskbar we're going to see on the Pixel Fold, and then let's launch an app. And then let's launch another app alongside it. And let's repeat this a few times, and what do you see before you but the Pixel 7 Pro, despite its low benchmarking scores, holding on and hanging in there, performing just as well, if not better than, 
the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Crazy, I know. Now, of course, there are apps that represent the Autobahn, where you can go much, much faster, okay? If you're running Genshin Impact, and you want to have the graphics maxed out with the highest frame rate, then absolutely tell me that the Tensure G2 is not fast enough for you because of that, and you're leaning more towards the Z Fold. That's fine. Absolutely fine. There, there are apps where this is going to be the case. But you've got to admit to me that by and large, the majority of the time, whether it's the Pixel Fold or the Z Fold, the apps that most people use most of the time are going to behave effectively identically. There will be times where the Pixel Fold is faster. There will be times where the Z Fold is faster, but the average consumer will see no effective difference until they use such apps like Genshin Impact or high-end games where a difference can be seen. Now, you've also got to contend with the fact that the software the device runs makes a huge difference. And no, I'm not talking about the apps. I'm talking about the actual implementation of Android. What Google does with their Pixels, with their version of Android, is very, very different to what Samsung does with One UI. One UI has a lot more stuff added on top. Now, you may say to me, I want those things. I need those things. Fine. Great. I'm, I'm happy for you. But as someone who has used several pixels as of late using these Tensor chips, at no point do they ever feel slow. When I use my Pixel 7 Pro and then I use my S23 Ultra, I am never thinking, man, this Pixel is just so slow. Whether it's a combination of processor and the software that it's running or just how I use it or whatever, I, you know, I can't fully suss that out for you. But at the end of the day, they both feel extremely fast to me. And if you look at the reviews of these phones, it's not just me who feels this way. The Pixel 7 Pro was never criticized for being slow. Go watch a review from anybody you want. They're not going to call it slow. They may say the benchmarking scores were lower than other phones, but they're not going to say that when they were using it, it was any slower than the next phone because... We are all driving cars with 600 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque on roads with 35 mile an hour speed limits. And if that's what you want, you're the equivalent of that person who wants a crazy high-performance car but understands they will rarely, if ever, be able to take advantage of their performance capabilities. You, want, you just want to drive that Maserati because you like it. You like knowing it's there. You like knowing you have that power if you ever wanted to use it. That is also fair, okay? If that's what you want, buy the Z Fold because that's what you're after. Fair enough. But to characterize things as the Pixel will be slow is just sort of a shallow way to look at things. It's not going to be slow. It's just not going to be a Maserati, but it's going to be able to do all the things people want to do pretty darn quickly and generally speaking, just as quickly as the Z Fold or any other device on the market. It just seems so strange to me that there are, of course, things to talk about with the Pixel Fold that we should be concerned about. This is the first time Google has made a foldable. How will these devices hold up? And how will Google handle it when devices begin to fail? We've seen them fall short when, you know, Pixel's devices have had their camera glass shatter and Google's not handled that well. This is a concern. We can wonder how efficient the Tensor G2 will be with such a large screen to drive. How will the battery life be now? It's got a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, so I think it's probably going to be okay. But that's an actual concern to have. What will Google's software suite be like versus Samsung? Samsung has had so long to build the software for the Z Fold. Will Google's be as good right out of the gate? For me, these are the concerns. I'm not worried that the Tensor is outdated, old, slow, whatever it might be. That is the least of my concerns. If you look at the Google Pixel Fold and you think that that form factor is just ideal for you, but you're worried that the Tensor G2 is going to be too slow because you've been reading this in comments and so forth and so on, I'm here to tell you that should not be your concern. If you compare the Fold and you compare the Z Fold and you like the form factor of the Pixel Fold better, unless you spend a great deal of your time playing Genshin Impact at the highest possible frame rate, take the Tensor G2, 
and throw this out of your mind. It should not be a concern at all. Fall back on the other things that differentiate. Fall back on DEX. Fall back on the S Pen. The things that are actually worth comparing between these two devices. Fall back on the efficiency of the G2 if you want to continue considering it. Think about the efficiency and what the battery life might be. But the performance simply should not be a concern for the vast majority of people. Real, nuanced, objective conversations where we admit where we have preferences and we admit where there are facts. That is what I'm after on this channel and in the discourse in the comment section down below. So let's proceed in that direction. If you want to see more content just like this, hit that subscribe button down below. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.